Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, defining an infinite series and finding the sum or the limit of an infinite series. And to begin with, there's a lot of information here, but let's just focus on the centerpiece. This is just a lot of different ways that we could represent the sum of an infinite series. We use this capital letter S, you've seen already before, dealing with series. And our subscript is the infinity symbol to represent the sum of an infinite series. Or another way that you could represent the sum of an infinite series is by using a uh, summation notation, saying that we're going to start with the first term. Instead of having an n value here that we would end that uh, series with, we're going to say it's going to go on for infinity with our explicit formula for whatever that geometric or uh, arithmetic series uh, sequence would be. Or another way that we could represent a uh, infinite series would be to say that the limit as n approaches infinity for the sum of a particular series. Or lastly, the last way that we could write it is saying the limit as n approaches infinity and using summation notation here to represent um, n. Again, that n would be approaching infinity, so we'd have infinity here, um, starting with the first term on. And again, to the right of your sigma notation, we would represent the, or we would have the explicit formula. But again, those are just four different ways that you could represent the uh, idea that we're going to be finding the sum of an infinite series. Now, one such example of an infinite series would be this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. This would be an arithmetic series because you're constantly adding 1 to each next term in the, in the series. And if you think about it, as you continue to increase, the sum of that series is going to continue to increase without limit. And that's an important fact because that is true of all infinite arithmetic series, that they will always have no limit. Now, if we're dealing with, if, or if there is a limit that exists, if we're dealing with a particular series that has a limit, we still say that that particular series then would be convergent. Or if we're dealing with an arithmetic series and there is no limit, we would say that it is divergent. So those two terms that we've learned about in the previous videos still apply to what we're going to be talking about in this lesson. Now let's look at a particular sequence. Now if you don't have my notes, you don't have to worry about copying all of this down, but maybe just uh, copy down these first three terms of the sequence. You don't have to be confused by that piece here. But it says, what type of sequence is this? Well, we want to figure out, is it arithmetic or is it uh, geometric? If it's arithmetic, we'd be adding the same amount each time. If it was arithmetic, going from 4 thirds to 8 thirds, I'd be adding uh, 4 thirds, because 4 thirds plus 4 thirds is 8 thirds. But 4 thirds plus 8 thirds is 12 thirds, not 16 thirds. So this is not an arithmetic sequence. Is it a geometric sequence? If it's a geometric sequence, you'd be multiplying by the same amount each time. So 4 thirds times 2 over 1, or just 4 thirds times 2, would give us 8 thirds. 8 thirds times 2 would be 16 thirds, and so on. So this is a geometric sequence. And our value for R, our constant ratio in this case, is going to be just a 2. And we'll come back to talking about the significance of that in a little bit. But then it says, find the first five partial sums of the series. Well, what it means by partial sum is S sub 1 would refer to the sum of the first term of the series. Well, the sum of that would just be 4 thirds. That's easy enough. Now, S sub 2, what that means is the sum of the first two terms in the series. So we would take the 4 thirds plus the 8 thirds, which would give you 12 thirds. Well, 12 thirds, that reduces to 12 divided by 3 would reduce just to be 4. So the first partial sum or the first sum of the series would be 4 thirds. The second sum of the series would be 4. To find the sum of the third partial sum or the sum of the first three terms of the series, technically we would take 4 thirds plus 8 thirds plus 16 thirds. Well, I already know that 4 thirds plus 8 thirds is 4, or I want to look at that as being 12 thirds. The reason why is because in order to add that to 16 thirds, we need to have a common denominator. So using 12 thirds would make this easier. So 12 thirds plus 16 thirds would be 28 thirds, which doesn't reduce. So to find the sum of the first four terms of the series, we're going to add together, uh, well, we already know the sum of the first three terms is going to be 28 thirds, so we're going to add that 
to the fourth term in the series. Well, we don't know what the fourth term is. We have to figure out what that is by multiplying by 2, remember. So 16 times 2. You don't multiply the top and bottom by 2. Remember, we're multiplying by 2 over 1. So 16 times 2 is 32. So this will be 32 over 3, or 32 thirds. And that sum is going to end up being 60 over 3, which that simplifies technically to be 20. But now to find the fifth term in the series, I'm going to take the sum of the first four terms, which would be 60 over 3, and add to that the next term in the sequence. So I know that the fourth term is 32 over 3. Multiply that times 2, that gives me 64 over 3. So the sum of the first five terms of the series, then I'd add the numerators, which would be 124 over 3. And that does not simplify. So if we look at this, the sum of the first terms would be 4 thirds. The next sum of the first two terms are 12 thirds. The sum of the first three terms is 28 thirds. Then we had 60 thirds, 124 thirds. Here's what we're looking, here's what we're getting at. These sums are continuing to increase without any bound meaning that there's not, they're not approaching a particular value. So what that means is part C, when it says, does these infinite series seem to converge? Our answer for that would be no. It does not converge. The reason why is it is increasing without limit. Without limit. And if that's the case, if it's increasing without limit, oh, it diverges. Now, there's a way that we could have figured all this out just by looking at this value for r. Without having to do all this work, we can figure out whether it's converging or diverging by looking at our constant ratio. How does that constant ratio help us? Well, let's look at the box here. In fact, the second part of the box would help us for that previous example. Because the value for r is going to tell us two things. It's going to tell us if it diverges or converges. If the value of r is greater than 1 or less than negative 1, the series is going to be diverging. So in that last example, our value for r was 2, which is obviously bigger than 1. So right off the bat, I could have figured out that it's going to diverge. Now, if that value for r is between negative 1 and 1, we know that that series is going to be converging. And this is the important piece to know what it converges to. Again, these are just a couple of ways that we could show that we're trying to find the um, sum of a series. But to try to figure out what that series is going to converge to, we take the first term and divide that by 1 minus your constant ratio. Now, again, it's important to note that this is referring to a geometric series. Because remember, all arithmetic series are going to diverge. So if it's an arithmetic series, you don't have to go through this process. An arithmetic series is going to be divergent. Let's look at these first four examples here. Now, you might notice that these first two examples are very similar. Now, let's look at the um, uh, instructions here. This will help us. It says, which of the following could be convergent geometric series? For those that could be, give the limit. This first example, they're being tricky here. This is a sequence, not a series. So to answer the question, is it a geometric series, this particular example is a sequence. They're trying to be, they're trying to be uh, cute here, but you don't have to worry. I'm not going to do that to you on a quiz or a test. I would just give you the actual series like we have in part B. But it is important to determine whether or not this series is geometric or arithmetic. Because if it is arithmetic, I know right away it's going to be divergent. So let's see if this one is geometric. Well, you might notice that the numerator is staying the same. Well, if it's geometric, that means that the numerator is being multiplied by 1. The denominator is going from 3 to 9, then to 27, then to 81. So the denominator is being multiplied by 3. So in other words, each fraction is being multiplied by 1 over 3. So our constant ratio here would be 1 third, which means it converges. Because my ratio, since that constant ratio is between negative 1 and 1, we know it converges. Now we just got to figure out what does it converge to. Remember we have this uh, formula, g sub 1 over 1 minus r. Well, I know that my first term here is 5 thirds. Let me move this. 
So we know our first term, like I said, is 5 thirds. We're going to divide that by 1 minus our constant ratio. Our ratio is 1 third. Well, hopefully you recognize that 1 minus 1 third, or we could change that 1 to be 3 over 3, would end up being 2 thirds. Well, we want to simplify this. We don't want to leave a fraction inside of a fraction. So here's how you'd simplify a problem like this. Take the numerator, whether it's a fraction or not. Take that numerator, whatever it is, and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves, or 3 over 2. And what happens here is the 3's cancel each other out, and we end up getting 5 halves. Now, you could just multiply 5 times 3 and get 15, and 3 times 2 and get 6, but then you have to reduce it. Reducing it before you multiply is sometimes easier because then we have small numbers to work with. We have 5 halves, so we can see that that can't be reduced. So that is your answer. That is the limit that this particular series would be converging to. Let's look at the next one. Again, we want to figure out what is, if it is a geometric sequence, and if it is, what is the constant ratio? So now this one, it's a little bit harder to see just by, tell, just by looking at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down here at these smaller numbers. Now, if I can't see what I multiply 40 by to get 10, what I can do is I can take the 10 divided by 40. 10 divided by 40 gives me 1 fourth. Now, if I take 1 fourth of 640, sure enough, I get 160. If I take 1 fourth of 160, sure enough, I get 40. And we know then that 1 fourth of 40 would be 10. So my constant ratio for this one is 1 fourth. Since that constant ratio is between negative 1 and 1, I know it converges. To figure out what it converges to, that's where we're going to have to use that formula. So this time, our numerator is going to be 640. Our denominator is going to be 1 minus 1 fourth, which would be 3 fourths. So to figure out what this is, I would take that 640, multiply that times the reciprocal of 3 fourths, which is 4 thirds. And now to multiply these together, we're going to, the uh, denominator is going to stay the same because the 640, we can look at that as being uh, 640 over 1. So our denominator is going to be 3. Our numerator, we're going to have to take 640 times 4, which if you do that in your head or do that on a calculator, you end up getting 2,560. That can't reduce, so that is your answer. And by the way, you want to leave these as fractions. Let's look at the next one. Again, our step, first step is to always figure out if it's a geometric or arithmetic sequence. If it's a geometric sequence, in this case, we'd be multiplying the numerator by 5 and the denominator by 1. So we'd be multiplying by 5 here. So 1 half times 5 would be 5 halves. But 5 halves times 5 is 25 halves, not 9 halves. So this is not a um, geometric sequence. To see if it is arithmetic, you see, are we always adding the same amount? And sure enough, we are. We're adding 4 um, halves each time, because 4 over 2 plus 1 half would be 5 halves, and 5 halves plus 4 halves would be 9 halves, and 9 halves plus 4 halves would be 13 halves. So this is a arithmetic series. So since it's arithmetic, it's going to be divergent. So why don't you guys try some of these on your own? So why don't you pause the video and try these. Again, I always look to see if it's uh, like this next, I'll just tell you this one here. Remember this one here? It's got commas instead of pluses. So this is a sequence, not a series. But why don't you guys try the other three, E, G, and H? So again, first, look to see if it's an arithmetic or geometric series. If it's a geometric series, see if it's got a value for R between negative 1 and 1. And if it does, figure out what its limit is by using that formula that we've talked about in this lesson. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, so let's see what you did on the first one here. So hopefully you recognize that this one here is a constant ratio of negative one-half. So it is uh, convergent here. And to figure out uh, what it converges to, we would use our formula. So we start with the first term and divide that by 1 plus 1 half. It becomes plus 1 half because 1 minus negative 1 half would make it into a 1 plus 1 half, which would be the same as 10 over 3 halves, which you can simplify this 
by taking and multiplying the 10 by the reciprocal of 3 halves, which is 2 thirds, which gives you 20 thirds, which cannot be reduced. The next one's a little bit trickier. We have 1.25 minus 2.5 and so on. And so here we find that constant ratio is negative 2. So you're multiplying by negative 2 each time. So it's convergent. So to figure out what it converges to, we're going to use the formula again. But this time, the 1.25, because if I left it as 1.25 over 3, and if I did that on my calculator, you get 0.416 repeating. But we want to have the exact solution. So what we want to do is that 1.25, we want to look at that as being the same as 5 fourths. Because 1.25 is the same as 1 and 1 fourth, which would be the same as the improper fraction of 5 fourths. Divide that by 3. So again, we take the reciprocal of the denominator, which would be 1 third, and multiply that times the 5 fourths to get 5 twelfths. So that would give you the exact solution there. And lastly, you get this one. You have the constant ratio would be 1 half. But this time it's a positive 1 half. So this time when we take in our denominator 1 minus 1 half, it would actually be just 1 half. Multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of 1 half, which is just 2, or 2 over 1, and you get 20 as your answer. So that's it. So that is your notes for today. So the key thing to remember is this formula. And also remember that you always want to look to see if the value for r is between negative 1 and 1, or if it's bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1 to determine whether it converges or di diverges. And also recall that all arithmetic series automatically diverge. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.